Hey guys, it's Ken here from TechUI and today I'll be giving you guys my review on the Essential Phone. So let me do a quick rundown of the specs first. The Essential Phone comes in at 185 grams. It comes with a 5.71 inch 19x10 2K display. On the inside, it has a Qualcomm Snapdragon 835 chipset with the Adreno 540 GPU. It has 4GB of RAM, 128GB of storage, and it's paired with Bluetooth 5.0. It's jumped on the dual camera bandwagon with two 13MP cameras. Starting off with the design, the Essential Phone is unique in that it's both attractive and minimalistic. There is simply no questioning the premium nature of the de device. The blocky design of the Essential Phone does away with the curves in favor for an easier to hold build. The head that comes with the Essential Phone is in part due to the titanium frame. I personally like the heft that's given by the Essential Phone. But I must warn you guys that the Essential Phone is a huge fingerprint magnet, so I highly suggest you guys slapping on a skin or a case. On the front of the device, it has a notch. It's not intrusive at all. As a matter of fact, I barely notice it in my day-to-day -day use. Design-wise, I think this might be one of the cleanest, best-looking phones I've ever seen. So moving on to the display. Essential wants the display to be the main focus point of this phone. And the biggest reason for the design of the display is to fit the biggest display into the smallest phone. And they have achieved this with a Quad HD 19 by 10 aspect ratio screen that basically covers the entire front of the phone. Cut out by only a notch and a small chin at the bottom. The feeling of having all this screen is great. This is one of the biggest draws of the Essential Phone. The only real gripe I have with this display is that it's a LCD panel. By nature, it doesn't offer as high of contrast as an AMOLED panel would, but it's pretty good and I have no complaints. Also, visibility outside under the sun is really good. Overall, the screen is wonderful on the Essential Phone. The Essential Phone is no slouch under the hood being paired with the Snapdragon 835 Adreno 540 GPU. It also includes 4GB of RAM. Tash should fly through the essential phone. Unfortunately, it's not always the case. Um, after using it for about a couple weeks now, I've noticed that some tasks just aren't up to par with other flagship devices. The camera, for example, is just notoriously bad. Hopefully, they push out more software updates in the future to smooth out everything. Moving on to the hardware and the build quality of this phone. Let me address the elephant in this room. The essential phone does not come with a headphone jack, but I guess that's pretty much becoming the standard nowadays. But the buttons on the essential phone are really clicky, and I really like the feedback that they give. Also, unfortunately, the essential phone does not come with stereo speakers, and it only has a single bottom firing speaker, and it's not that great. Moving on to the battery. The essential phone comes with a 3040mAh battery, which can definitely get you through the entire day. And actually got me through a day and a little bit more with lighter usage. So a uh, battery should not be an issue for the essential phone. It also comes with Qualcomm's quick charge, but it's nowhere near as quick as OnePlus's dash charging. It's still a nice feature to have. On the back of the phone, it has magnetic pins for modularity. Right now, the only module out there for the Essential Phone is the 360-degree camera. Let's hope that Essential will push out more accessories to really take advantage of those magnetic ports. And to be honest, I personally think that the magnetic ports have great potential. I also personally think that the magnetic ports are better than Moto's modular cases. I also want to point out something that I think more phone makers should take from the central phone. If you look closely at the top edge of the phone above the front facing camera, you can see that the earpiece is positioned along the edge. By doing this, Essential is able to use a smaller sized notch instead of the wider notches found in many other Android devices. As a matter of fact, the recently announced Oppo R17 and R17 Pro takes a page from Essential's book and went for a tiny raindrop notch that mainly houses the front facing camera while placing the earpiece along the top edge. Moving on to the camera, Essential jumped on the bandwagon and 
they put in dual cameras. Unfortunately, the dual cameras are not quite there with other high-end flagship devices. The camera has a dual 13 megapixel camera. One is RGB and one is monochrome. Both of them have an aperture of f1.85. Both of them have face detection. On the front, it has an 8 megapixel camera. In good lighting, the photo quality is decent. Once you get into less than ideal to low light, it becomes terrible right away. The camera app itself is also really bad. Starting off with the app icon, it looks really cartoonish and just doesn't fit with the ecosystem of the software. So diving into the camera app, it's pretty bare bones. There's barely any features. When it launched, it didn't even have any HDR features. Since then, we've gone HDR and we've also gone a portrait mode. In the video department, it can record up to 4K 30 frames per second video and it can also do that on the front camera. If you are not getting the phone just for its camera, then that's fine. But don't get the phone if you want to just use it for the camera. Moving on to the software, it comes with stock Android. Central has been pretty good about pushing out updates and security patches. They come out sometimes even faster than Google's own Pixel devices, which is a good thing to see on a startup like this. The software overall is really clean. I believe this is a great value. But let's touch on some downsides. One of them is definitely the camera. Another one is that the essential phone is only rated for IP54 splash resistance. I do wish it has a higher IP rating. It doesn't have wireless charging. Though the essential phone dropped at $700. It recently has been dropped all the way down to $350. So now you can find an essential phone for $350 new. You can even buy a used essential phone. So if you're looking for a new phone and if you're wondering whether or not you should get the essential phone, I'd say if you can get it for $400 or less, definitely get it. But for the conclusion, this is one of the best phones for its value at its price point. With solid specs and solid hardware and with a clean software, it's one of the very few phones out there that has such a complete package. If you're in the market for a lower priced, high value, flagship like phone, yes, I would highly recommend the Essential Phone. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys like this review, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Comment down below if you like or if you would purchase the Essential Phone. And I'll see you guys in the next video.